In the case of Mbala Mbala versus France, Mr. Mbala is actually uh, the comic, French comic called Dieudonné. And you may have come across articles related to, uh, to Dieudonné in, uh, in the press. At the end of a show in December 2008 at the Zenit in Paris, the French comic Dieudonné invited Robert Forisson. Uh, an academic who has received a number of convictions in France for his denial of the existence of gas chambers in concentration camp. So Dieudonné invites Robert Forisson to join him on stage to receive a prize for unfrequentability and insolence. The prize takes the form of a three-branch candlestick with an apple on each branch and the prize is awarded to him by an actor wearing what is described as basically a pair of stripped pyjama with a stitch on yellow star bearing the word Jew. So that actor was basically playing the part of a Jewish deportee in a concentration camp, giving a prize to the one person who is denying the existence of gas chambers and concentration camp. According to the European Court, Dieudonné was not entitled to the protection of Article 10 uh, on freedom of expression. So the court basically said, you know, the, what, what this um, show has done, what this comic has done, is so outrageous, is so um, awful, that it cannot be protected by Article 10, and it falls under Article 17 of the Convention. The court considered in particular that during the offending scene, the performance could no longer be seen as entertainment, but rather resembled a political meeting, which under the pretext of comedy, promoted the degrading portrayal of Jewish deportation. In the court's view, this performance demonstrated hatred and anti-Semitism and support, support for Holocaust denial. Disguised as an artistic production, it was in fact as dangerous as a head-on and sudden attack. I'm citing here from the decision. And it provided a platform for an ideology which ran counter to the values of the European Convention and contributed to the destruction of the rights and freedom of the Convention. And so, of course, it ruled against uh, Dieudonné. Now, you uh, may recall the, the context as well of that decision. It is um, 2015 after the attack on um, not only the, news, the, the magazine Charlie Hebdo, but also the Jewish kosher shop in, uh, in Paris. And it is way possible that the context may have somehow impacted on the decisions. But it remains the case that um, courts, at least in Europe, do not hesitate to use uh, Article 17 and the concept of speech contributing to the destructions of rights and freedom to uh, le legitimately restrict that form of speech. Let's turn to a different case, Arslan versus Turkey. The court concluded in that case that the conviction of Mr. Arslan, the author of a book entitled History in Mourning, 33 Bullets, was disproportionate to the aims pursued and accordingly not necessary in a democratic society. The court reached this conclusion by noting, among other things, that the applicant is a private individual. He made his views public by means of a literary work rather than through the mass media a fact which limits their potential impact on national security, public order, and territorial integrity. The court notes, in addition, that although certain, particularly a Serbic passage in the book, paint an extremely negative picture of the population of Turkish origin and give the narrative a hostile tone, these uh, extract do not constitute an incitement to violence, armed resistance, or uprising. In the court's view, this is a factor which it is essential to take into consideration. So the, the speech in questions may have been offensive, may have been hostile, but did not incite. 
and therefore the, the, the court uh, concluded that um, re restriction to uh, freedom of expression was not le uh, legitimate. In another case against from Turkey, Surek versus Turkey, the court focused on the context of the letters published in a newspaper and the context in which they were published. These again were uh, letters that were uh, fairly um, aggressive in, in their tone and referred to uh, the uh, situation in Southeast Turkey. In the view of the court, the letters amounted to an appeal to bloody revenge by stirring up emotions and hardening already embedded prejudice, which have manifested themselves in deadly violence. The letters were published in the context of a security situation in Southeast Turkey, where for approximately 20 years, serious disturbance have raged between the th security forces and the members of the PKK, the, uh, the Kurdish uh, independentist movement. In such a context, the court said, the content of the letter must be seen as capable of inciting to further violence in the region by instilling a deep-seated and irrational hatred against those depicted as responsible for alleged atrocities.